This week on Free Plays, we're looking at Alien Hominid, one of the very first games by the Behemoth, who later became popular for Castle Crashers. So I got the game for a few bucks and decided to pop it in to see what it was like, and it really wasn't like what I was expecting. So it's really more of a throwback to older style games, almost like Contra or even more similar to Metal Slug. So you're Hominid, this little alien that comes down to the planet, and you're getting chased by the FBI and obviously that's bad, so you need to kill everything in your way to reclaim your ship that was destroyed. So you're trying to find your ship parts. And another reference to another game, it's kind of like Toe, Jam, and Earl, in a very similar aspect to that. But anyways, the game is a action-based shooter, kind of like I was saying with Contra and Metal Slug. You have your guns and you, you run around, shoot everything that moves pretty much, pick up power-ups, get cooler guns, and try not to die and trying to not to die is one of the hardest things to do in the game because it's very very unforgiving so you have one hit and then you lose your life and you only have so many lives per continue and then you only have so many continues before it's actually game over so it really gives you this feeling of uh, intensity as you're going through the levels because each little bullet can knock you out and it's it's difficult it's really hard to get through that and it's still fun though so if you like that older style game which is apparently what the creators were going for then you'll find this one to be really fun or if you're like me you can just put it on easy mode and get through it that way and the first thing you'll notice about the game though if you've played castle crashers is that it looks just like castle crashers um, a little bit more crude but that's definitely a good thing because castle crashers hand-drawn visuals and this one's hand-drawn visuals really stand out and they're very unique it feels like um, almost like a school kid drawing of, you know, a alien crash landing and like shooting stuff, but it still fits the game really well and it fits the uh, violence level really well too. So when you shoot things like with your gun, they kind of die in horrible ways. Um, it's always the same animation, but they'll either get like ripped in half or they'll get set on fire or they'll turn to ice and then fall over and crumble into pieces or you know, something even worse. And then you fight a lot of bosses that are usually huge machines that will explode and like horrible deaths and there's like fire and flame everywhere so if you're into that it's pretty cool but there's a multiplayer aspect I wasn't unfortunately wasn't able to get into because I didn't have anyone to play with while I was playing the game and uh, I know when you play it you just have two hominids on the screen at once and I assume it would kind of amp up the amount of enemies that come in so that's that gives it a lot of replay value there but outside of that the game only has I want to say I played through about 15-ish missions and then uh, you know you're, you're at the end boss and the game's pretty much over so for the main game, there's not much to work with there, but for outside of the main game, they have uh, mini games that you can play that give some life to the game. Um, so the mini games are just that. They're just mini games. They don't really offer too much excitement outside of the main game, so you're really just kind of playing the game for, you know, maybe an hour or two until you actually beat it. Um, so it's relatively short, but what the game does that's really well is it really mixes up the variety of gameplay for each level. So yeah, it's always about running and gunning and killing everything, but the way you do it is different. So for example, the first few levels in, the, in World 1, you're kind of running around on foot, um, shooting things and grabbing weapons and trying to live, and then eventually you find your ship and you have levels where you're flying in your ship taking out flying enemies and you get to maneuver your ship and fire all at the same time. And then, you know, even later on you have enemies that can't be killed by guns, you know, you need to figure out that you need to shoot this water, hi water hydrant to blast water up into this big old jelly's face to defeat it that way. Or you get in your ship and pick up um, the missiles that, rock that a tank is launching at you and then you fire them back down at the tank. So the creativity is pretty high and it, it makes you feel that, it always makes the game feel fresh and not so stale when you're doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, but the big question is, would you keep would I keep playing it uh, after the first hour? And probably not. And it's not because it's a bad game by any means. Uh, it actually has a lot to offer. It's just the game's pretty much over. And I'm not someone that is going to go through a game multiple times to get better scores or anything like that. I just kind of want to experience it. And you can kind of do that in one playthrough. Yeah, you're going to die a lot, but once you figure out what you're doing, you can go back or continue or cheat to get to the next level, and you can see everything. And then after that, you only really got one hour before you see it all. Unless you're really avid about playing with someone else, there's really no reason to go through the game again. But Alien Hominid for the PS2 and GameCube, and it was also released on the Xbox 360 in the HD version. Uh, it's a good kind of look if you want to get appreciate more for what Castle Crashers did in terms of this indie game's development. You can look at this one, and I'll see you next time.